You're listening to Swinging Down Under, a podcast about the swinging, non-monogamous lifestyle. From two crazy Australians with over four years of lifestyle antics to keep you entertained, informed, angry, happy and horny. Join our international swinging adventures. G'day guys and welcome to a bonus episode of Swinging Down Under. Welcome Daryl. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing alright. Doing okay on this uh, Tuesday, I believe, if I'm not if I'm not wrong. Yeah, not sure. Yeah, I don't know. It ends in Y. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't apply. The rules don't apply in 2020. This bonus episode is all about swinging in the media. Now, if you follow our monthly newsletter, then I have a section in there about, you know, kind of like non-monogamy in the news, news articles that I pick up on a monthly basis. And of course, there's hundreds normally sometimes in a month that can be about... The swing in lifestyle can be about non-monogamy, could be about polyamory, really just a big gambit of everything. And I normally include them in this monthly newsletter. Now, over the last month, I have noticed, we've noticed, a flurry of internet activity relating to the lifestyle, swinging and events. And so we wanted to talk a little bit about swinging in the media, what impact that might have on the swinging lifestyle, if any at all. And then we're going to talk about, before we get into that though, some fun searched topics and commonly searched items that people look for in Google. And Daryl, this was your idea. So do you want to tell everybody the whole like peeling the the sticker off the board? Normally people would do that on, on YouTube, but you know, this is audio only. So you want to tell people about that while well, I find them? So I'm wasting time here. Okay. Um, so basically what we're looking at is you know, the common searched things when it comes to swing up or so swinging. So um, I'm sure Kate's punching that into Google right now to give us at least the first one and whether we, you know, whether it freaks us out, whether it's normal, what, what the crack is. So these are commonly searched items in Google. So when you type in a word, there'll be multiple phrases that come up underneath that word It be, as trying to be super helpful. Helpful. Like, hey, you typed in, I don't know, cactus. Are you looking for cactus costumes to wear for a Halloween party? I'm confident most people have experienced the Google drop down menu before. Are you sure? Given it's the default setting. Okay. Just, just saying. I only have four. So I spent a little while trying to find these and it was actually harder than I thought it was going to be, to be, for, to be quite honest. So the first one's hot wife. I typed in hot wife and this is what I got. Hot wife bracelets, hot wife charm bracelet, hot wife infinity symbol meaning, hot wife infinity symbol, hot wife clothing and jewellery, hot wife Did bracelets. Did you say infinity or infinity? <laughs> it was infinity. I fucked it up. Hot wife clothing and jewellery, hot wife bracelets for sale, hot wife charm bracelet meanings, hot wife clothing and jewellery. What does that tell you about the term hot wife? I, I, I laugh my like, ass off. I feel like there's a lot of people looking for hot wife jewellery. Yeah, don't that's you think that's what funny? It, that's what it feels like. So there's a lot of people out there in the world that are just wanting to put themselves out there as a hot wife is what I read from that. And also hot wives tend to spend money on hot wife stuff. I don't know. Or their husbands do. Like who do you think is actually searching these terms? The wife or the husband? I don't know. Really? I'm going to, I'm going to guess it's probably the husband. Yeah. But I don't actually know. This is actually a common question that comes up in a lot of the forums. Sometimes we get it as well on email is, you know, how do you, how do we identify a hot wife? You know, is there a bracelet? Is she wearing an anklet? Oh, if she's got a toe ring on, that means she's a hot wife. And I tell you what, how, how do you identify one? You ask her. That's it. Like there is no definitive global everybody, every hot wife out there is wearing a toe ring or an anklet because that's just bullshit and it's not true. Right. Okay. So <laughs> that was... Um... Bit of a tangent. So here's my next one. Yeah. You ready? Yeah, I didn't realise that we were going through like all different ones. Yeah, we're doing anyway. four. Okay, yeah, cool. Swinging is, what do you reckon one of the, actually here you go, so I've got like 10 responses for this. Swinging is, what would you say would be one of the common Google recommendations for this? No idea. No guess? No, I have Google in front of me if we want to do the guessing game. <laughs> I can just Google it. No. Okay, so what is Swinging 60s, right? And there's a whole heap of stuff about here about a bridge in Gatlinburg. Gatlinburg as well, which, you know, interesting, um, which is the swinging bridge, which we looked at recently. Um, what is the meaning of swinging? And also why swinging is good for a marriage. That's it. That's all I got for that one. I thought there was going to be something juicier in there, but it's just all about like swinging chairs and outdoor lounge furniture. Yeah, that's not really a surprise. Yeah, but we Okay, swinging lifestyle is what I want to do next. And I only Why didn't you just do swinging? I tried to. It doesn't bring up anything that's actually worthwhile. Okay. Unless you've got it in front of you and you're able to achieve that, but I couldn't get it to. Maybe I searched swinging too much, so it's like surely you don't mean this. Swinging meaning. Okay. Swinging 60s, swinging for the fences. Yeah, see? So I put in swinging lifestyle and I got swinging lifestyle symbols, lifestyle swinging meaning, and then lifestyle swinging doors. So again, people are looking for symbols, looking for meaning, trying to find other people. It's super weird. 
Uh, go to dating sites, guys. If you're out there listening, go to a, a dating site. That's how you can find people. Okay. I then typed in swinging will. Swinging will ruin my marriage. Swinging will help induce labor. What? I don't think they mean swinging sex. I think they yeah. mean like I'm just going to start swinging from the rafters and I might induce labor. Yes. Or maybe they do mean swinging. Like if you just go out and have an orgy, it might induce labor. I'm not saying it won't. I'm not saying it will. I'm not a medical professional. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so you're really not saying a lot. I'm not saying a lot. What I'm doing is sitting on the fence. Do you like it? Yeah, you get splinters if you sit there too long. Though. That's the rule about sitting on the fence. Yeah. All right, so we're going to talk about recent articles in the news. You forgot right. about you didn't look for non-monogamy. I tried. I couldn't find any. What did you find? Non-monogamy search. Uh, opened. How did you spell non-monogamy? I think that's the problem. Uh, I spelt it with a dash and then without a dash. Okay. Then your Google's broken. Right, what do you got then? What's your... Open to non-monogamy, OK Cupid. That's the first one. Number one. Huh. Yep. Non-monogamy versus polyamory. Wow. Okay. Yep. Ethical non-monogamy. Oh, good. Yep. Types of non-monogamy. Ooh. God, this is too hard a word to say. <laughs> Non-monogamous relationships chart. Hmm. I th- that's one I'm actually going to click on a little later and see what that's all about. I know what that is. I, I love bet a bit you. of charting. I bet you I know what that is. Ethical non-monogamy versus open relationship. That's actually one I want to know about as well because that recently came up in a in a search. Uh, uh, sorry, a that's on a new dating website that we've joined recently in Europe. So yes. I think I know what you're talking about there. There was a quite there was a tick box to say like what kind of a relationship are you? And I think there was one that was open relationship and one that was ethical non-monogamy, right? Yeah, and there was also swinging. Yeah, yeah, and there was swinging as well. So So, probably should have looked up that before we ticked all of them, just FYI. Yeah. Hey, Europeans, I feel like you're overcomplicating matters there. Maybe not. Don't don't overstate. You haven't pressed the little search button on this yet to figure out what the difference is. It might be stark. They were also suggesting that you were interested in mating, if I'm not wrong, which was actually the English conversion. Google Translate. It was Google Translate, but I thought it was hella funny that – it said that, you know, C&D Swinger, therefore, interested in mating. Well, look. Yes. I mean, again, I'm not saying we're not interested in mating. Maybe we are. Well, no, we're not. We're not, actually. mating gives the um, outcome that we're we, not looking for. Yeah. Uh, ethical non-monogamy and cheating is the next one. And non-monogamous marriage is the final one. Ah, so non-monogamous seems to be a little bit better in terms of the responses than, than the ones I came up with then. Maybe. Maybe. Like more broader terms. All right, let's talk about some of the news articles and let's go through some of these. And I want to, so I just basically went went online, searched some commonly used terms and looked at recent news articles. I will say there has been a flurry of these more in the last, yeah, like month than I think I've seen generally happen month on month. First one here. A former Catholic school turned Nashville Swingers Club is reborn as a homeless shelter. <laughs> so this used to, this is a club in Nashville. It's actually um, a club that I know Double Date Nation used to uh, attend. It used to be a church. It's, it was then a swingers club for many, many, many years. It's called Menages. And then now they've been uh, removed from that particular venue and they're now turning it into, into a homeless shelter. So a former Catholic school turned Nashville Swingers Club reborn as a homeless shelter. How do you feel about that headline? I don't know why it matters. <laughs> I mean, you don't see, you don't see garage reborn as I don't know sex therapist's office. Can I can I read one of the lines out of this? Yeah, go nuts. The former Menages Club needed a lot of work and prayer to be ready for that new mission. Prayer was the executive director of the room in the prayer. end, which is the not for profit company. Oh, okay. So why does it need this headline is a bloody good question because it's shocking. It gets news, it gets people reading it as opposed to just saying like, hey, there's a new homeless shelter opened up in Tennessee. Well done, guys. Prayer. Right? You need to be able to get that kind of that clickbait, don't you reckon? Prayer. <laughs> I'm still praying for oh, my you- I'm still praying for my soul over here. You are? Yeah. Okay. Good on you guys, though, opening up a homeless shelter. Uh, congratulations to the room in the inn. Really bad name, but congratulations to you guys, opening up a homeless shelter in Tennessee. R- what? Hang on, room in the inn. Yeah, as in uh, room Yeah, in- no, I got you. Yeah. I, I, I know what it – I know. I yeah. Just, I was clarifying. So that's that one. That was the uh, that was that was in Tennessee. Let's move on. What else have we got? Swingers Party relocated from Nashville. 
So still heading into Tennessee here. I don't know why there's a lot of news happening for swingers swingers parties in uh, in Tennessee. But uh, swingers party relocated from Nashville. Now I actually was reading this as it was happening, as this was unfolding. Get out. Yes, I know. True story. Earlier in the month. Sounds really exciting. Because the reason That's a lie, it <laughs> the reason I was reading about this is because it's actually with uh, the Vibe Social Club or Vibe Swingers Parties and. They were one of the unfortunate uh, event organisers that were, I guess, exposed Relocated. to the news. And then as a result of that, have had to move and shut down their website and those sorts of things. This happened a couple of times in the last few months. Really? Yeah. So these particular people, they were... Ha- it's a bit shit. They were um, hosting a Christmas party that the that at the time the the Tennessee, I guess, governor had allowed and they'd been all through all through that. Now the news got a hold of it and approached the hotel that they were hosting at, approached a number of different parties and then eventually approached the host of the Vibe Social Club. And as a result of that, what's happening in this particular article is they're now moving to Mississippi. So they're going out of state and have um, sh- temporarily shut down their website and, and have had to move out of all of their arranging for their uh, party in, uh, in, in Nashville. Mm. So if you click on that, you can actually see all the associated articles from where they were hosting and now they're not. So why did that happen? Uh, What's I guess the issue? Controversy, I guess. So originally, although it might be, and this is a, you know, a, a good point, although the organisers might be... I only make good points. <laughs> they might be talking to like local council members, getting approval, seeking approval from the fire department, etc. It doesn't mean that it's approved by the general public. And so, of course, once people start getting a hold of this and news reporting gets a hold of it, then that's when it becomes very difficult to manage. And so as a result of that, many news articles went up. The hotel was contacted... And as a result of that, they're, they're, they've moved. Okay. Just because of the pure factor, I guess, of, of concerns about the attendees being outed, I would imagine. So there's no real reason for it? Is that what we're saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, so he, well, here's the situation. So it says here that the health department spokesperson, Brian Todd, told the news that the club's application, so they did go through an application process, was met and they met all of the requirements. The permit application, so the masks were going to be worn, et cetera. They limited the number of guests. Oh, this is during COVID? Yeah, this is now. Okay. So, so they, they limited the number of guests. It was all approved by the local council, et cetera. And then, of course, news headlines made and now they've got to move. So, yeah, it's for December. It was for a Christmas party. Yeah, so... Okay, so it's during COVID. So the, the issue is that it's during COVID. That's what the real issue is. That's the issue, yes. Okay, so sorry, you seem to be skirting around that. That's that the issue is that people have an issue with swingers getting together during COVID. Yeah, okay, yeah. So that's that's the, okay. the issue at its core. I guess my 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 point here though is that it's interesting that they went through the application process. Yeah, but but the but I think you, you I think what you're lacking there is the fact that the government is run in fact by the people, mm-hmm. not by the government. So no matter what their policies say, if the people then voice their opinion and that changes uh, what the opi- what the outcome is for the, then you know that's kind of how government works it's meant to be a voice for the people right okay and and the reason that I wanted to bring up that particular party first before I talk about the next party that also made news headlines this week I feel like if they're all this week they're all going to be about COVID so. they, oh they are all about COVID yeah, essentially okay. I mean at its core cool um, the interesting thing though is that that one was operating regardless of whether or not you think it's ethical to host or moral to host that one was operating under approval right that that was in, in essence it yeah, was but illegal its approval to was revoked right that happened because approvals aren't guaranteed no matter how well you get them approved well correct i mean after even if you do see the approval once the as you say once the population goes into an uproar and news articles get a hold of it then pretty quickly i would imagine that the health department would re- then pull your approval for that event right yes may have i'm not saying that's what did happen i'm just you know suggesting that but what made headlines in the last week and this has been circulated so many times so it was originally picked up by a smaller couple of news articles it then grew and grew and grew it eventually made um the new york post and it was an underground is the new york post a big yeah. thing i mean yeah, yeah okay it Just also went on, it went on cnn and it went on a few different other bits and pieces um it's been picked up by, i saw that it's been picked up by 50 plus different uh media outlets around the world so i even saw one that was in france now underground new york city swingers party with dozens of people busted by police now i'm sure if you're out there listening you've probably seen this there was over 80 people at a party it was an underground swingers party and it was held by a group called caligula new york and the reason that i wanted to bring this one up very differently daryl is because this one was operating illegally 100 percent illegally so at the moment there is restrictions on what you can actually do in new york city but take all that away 
They were also illegally selling alcohol in a warehouse situation. So, I mean, forget everything else. It doesn't matter whether they were swingers or not. They were doing something illegal. So biff, baff, boff. That is my point here. Out the door. So my point about this whole thing and what I've been saying this entire time, because people, of course, you know, they're going, oh, I can't believe swingers, you know, they're they're doing this. They're really harming they're really harming the the public, you know, this is un, unacceptable. But interestingly enough, there was a, a business meeting that was uh, busted the evening before, also in New York City, that had over 80 people at it as well, that was also operating illegally. But the police were unable to get in there because um, I think there was other rioters that stopped the police from being able to actually bust it up. But that was my exact, my exact exactly my point. Regardless of whether it's a swingers party or not, they were operating illegally. They were operating without a license. They were selling alcohol without an alcoholic license or liquor license in a warehouse. So I don't know. Do you think – so my question about these things. I think it was illegal. Bang. Yeah. Job done. Walking away. My question though – don't wear a seatbelt, you might get fine. <laughs> Aside from the ethical and moral standpoint of hosting or not hosting during COVID, let's take that completely off the table. And I want to talk about that. What I want to ask you is, do you think these news headlines impact the swinging lifestyle? Do you think they hinder the community in any way directly directly in the community? Do you think they hinder? Yeah, of course they do. If people are, people are concerned already about these fringe, any fringe events, whether it be swinging or anything else. So, you know, uh, fringe events get more attention than, and it's negative attention than the negative attention builds. It's just the nature of life, unfortunately. Yeah, but how, how do you think it hinders the community? That's what I want to know. The negative attention. I mean, if you get negative attention, then, then you know, you're kind of you're adding negative attention to everybody else as well along the way. So it, it means that you end up with a, a, a negative groundswell behind the attention that you're gaining. So it it's obviously detracts from anything that you're trying to achieve. Right. So what you're suggesting is that by these headlines taking place, that it's kind of wiping out other headlines that might be... People don't remember the positive headlines. I mean, when was... Uh, and people don't write about positive headlines. When was the last last time you saw somebody write about, you know, new baby born that was awesome and nothing wrong with it? It affects the perception of the lifestyle in the general community. That's it. So it, it's a negative perception, negative connotation. You end up with people looking at the lifestyle negatively, even if they perhaps are on the, the fringe of getting involved with it. It just becomes more negative. You know, there's already some negativity attached to the lifestyle in general. So it's just an additional negative that stacks on the other negatives. So what about the governor in another state who reads about this and decides, well, perhaps I m- might not let any swingers swingers clubs open or swinger event o- uh, events run because I don't want the negative press. What about the hotels that see this? So there is there is negative there is negative connotations. It's those are my exact points. I'm saying that people are saying that it brings negativity or that it perception it, it alters people's perceptions. Who gives a fuck about Mary Jane in Manhattan? What I'm saying and one of my big points does it hurt or hinder the 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 community? Yes, it does. One hundred percent is our inability to host at hotels, receive event insurance because of these negative issues that are popping up in the press. Because for recently, for example, there have been a number of hotel takeovers all throughout uh, the world, but there's been some recently in the United States, and the hotels have been named. They're on social media. People are commenting on them, talking about the hotel. How could you host this, etc. Now, that hotel is probably never going to host another swingers event ever because of their one negative experience with one event host during COVID. So that is a direct impact. And to your point as well, that now the perhaps the governors of Tennessee or you know New York City then might make it more difficult for the people who perhaps are trying to do the right thing, create something new to then jump over those hurdles as already um, you know a perceived high risk business to then be able to get licenses and other things. So, you know, it is already difficult enough to get things like, you know, banking support, things like insurance, things things like getting a hotel to actually get a contract with you to say, hey, we are okay with your business coming in and and supporting the lifestyle. And that's where I absolutely 100% think, think that it absolutely will hinder our community because I'm sure there's going to be hotels that are in the news that never want to be in the news again with these negative results with their hotel images and logo and name just blasted all over the internet. Probably. All right, so that's the New York City one. Interestingly, that party, though, I forgot to mention, they were also charging for access to the beds, which is an interesting thing. I've never seen that before. So there was like a – I think the police took a photo of a piece of paper that said you have to pay so much money 
to be on the bed for a certain amount of time. So, for example, you had to pay like 50 bucks for 10 minutes on the bed or whatever. I've never seen that before. Don't you think that's a bit interesting? Uh, yes, I do. But it doesn't sound, from from what you've described about everything else, it doesn't sound like they're an ethical company. So, you know. Let's talk about something else. And I'm curious whether or not you remember this. Swingers party at a train station. National police shut down a swingers party which was held in a commercial premises at the train station in Zaragoza. Do you know where that is? No. Remember that giant train station that we went to in Spain that was empty? That uh, they, yeah. they yes. Yep. Zaragoza, that was it. So we've been to this particular train station. I couldn't believe it. It made the uh, it made the news. Crazy, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so the location had bars, tables, sofas, rooms separated by curtains and been set up for by an association for liberated sexual relations. Officers went to the train station after a phone call from a security guard because music was heard well into the night, found several people inside who were charged with non-compliance with anti-coronavirus measures. The party exceeded the permitted number of people on private premises and was held after the curfew. So I was breaking the law again. Breaking the law, yeah. So breaking the law. But a train station, uh, a swingers party inside of a train station, I don't think I've heard that one before. Like that's up there. Mm, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you're just setting yourself up for failure by doing things like that for sure. Yeah. So that was in Spain. All right. The next one. Police take a year to find independent investigation for swingers shooting. I'd be interested if you remember this. A few years ago, there was a swingers party in Victoria, in Melbourne, Victoria, in Australia. And uh, two people were shot, a couple. A couple were shot and uh, during during the party, it was a Halloween party and one of the character, one of the people were dressed as a character who had a fake gun. The police went in there for whatever reason, I don't know, and shot two of the patrons. And they've been closed ever since and they've been investigating what's been happening here. So this happened more than three years ago and these two people that were at the party were shot. But I think worse, their names are currently plastered all over the internet. What about this one? How do you feel about this? Well, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that police... Shouldn't have done what they did. Um, the idea of being shot in in Australia for holding a fake gun is is pretty laughable, actually, given the amount of certainly handguns in in Australia is so mind numbingly low that the chances of a police officer coming across somebody with a handgun, I would say, is also fairly low. The idea is bad. I mean, people died. It, no, they didn't die. They they lived. Oh, okay. Well, people were shot. Either way, it's but, not a good outcome. But their names that's what, their names are all over the internet. So if you Google these two people's names, they're in front of me right now, I can see them, You, you their, their names are associated as they're actually not together anymore, the couple, which is probably not surprising given the stress that they'd be under. But I want to I know what your thoughts are about that. Were they outed or did they just agree to people using their names? I think the newspapers got a hold of it with the police reports and published their names. And then since then, because they've now had to appear in court for the last three years... Uh, as a result of that, their names are everywhere, their photos are everywhere, etc. So, have you got any positive ones that we can read? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Good. Can we get to those? So, what I, what I do want to say, though, just to clo- close the the loop on this, they just received three million dollars in compensation because the um, the police were found to be having misconduct. So, they were given three million dollars by the state of Victoria for. I'd I'd rather not be shot and not have the three million dollars just quietly. <laughs> Okay, let me see. So you want a good one here? Let me go. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I'm just clicking through. I've got like 15 tabs open here. Ah, okay. Nottingham Swiggers Club holds online parties after falling into Tier 3. So this is in uh, the UK and uh, the headlining club is actually Purple Mumba, but I happen to know that it's a bunch of clubs all going in together in the UK and hosting virtual parties. So here's one where it's saying a Nottingham Swingers Club said that it won't let the global pandemic ruin their fun and they've taken their activities online. Virtual swinging parties were launched by Purple Mumba with swingers from the UK, Europe and America jumping online. So there you go. So basically what they're saying here is that, hey, we can't operate right now. We've been forced to close it's having a negative impact on on our ability to to host at the club make money etc but now we're running virtual parties it's a good one right do you yes. think people would see that again like talking about before the the squeaky wheel gets the grease do you think people see that headline and go oh good for you guys like trying to do the right thing yes absolutely not you don't think it happens yeah it depends on their personal bias that they have from their perspective and given that we've had four or five negatives already in the beginning of this to lead to this positive then people's personal bias even listening to us may actually see it as a you know that that, that swinging is a negative during corona 
I got another one for you. State and Play. The virtual sex party is offering you an escape from isolation during lockdown. And they're talking about a number of different companies here. They're talking about Killing Kittens. Uh, they are talking about uh, Not Safe for Work, which is based out of New York City. And they're talking about Skirt Club. And Purple Mumba gets another mention in there as well. So there's another positive one where they're saying, look, people want to be engaged in the lifestyle. They can't go indoor anymore to these X-rated clubs. And now you can get your kink online without leaving. So that's quite a positive spin on one, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's call it. Let's call it a positive spin. Uh, Here's a question then. So I asked you before. Do you, do you think that the other articles hurt, you know hurt or hinder? Do you think so? Again, I ask you. Do you think that these ones have a positive? Depends on your perspective coming depends into Depends on your them. perspective. Okay. Do you think I mean, that more people might see that then and maybe be interested in giving the virtual parties a go because they might have been too scared to go, like newbies, too scared to go to a club, and so they might see these positive news articles and then go, you know what, I might jump online to a virtual party. I think one of the biggest concerns for newbies is that they are going to potentially be seen and outed by somebody at you know the event or online. And if you're talking about online, it's much easier for that to be the case you only have to one click of the mouse to make an inappropriate decision to get yourself up on on screen for example and i I think people will find it more concerning in a lot of ways okay at least if you're in a club and your boss walks up to you you're both in the club yeah i yeah i understand yep fair enough so it just depends on just depends on how people how au fait people are with technology and the you know the cameras and that are associated with all of this and all that sort of thing and it depends on how the events are set up because some events you don't really have the option to not be involved on video so it just depends on how things are set up additionally so many services that people are using out there right now are not secure Mm -hmm. you know yeah stop stop having sex parties on zoom thank you thank you very much not just zoom i know i'm just saying there's many different (laughs) many different uh, platforms and formats out there that people are, are using that well for one it's against their terms of uh, turn, terms terms of, service. of service, which immediately sets everybody on that call up for a potential liability. Then outside of that, you're also exposing people to potential risk by using a base platform that is not secure whatsoever. Yeah, it's not and encrypted. I can attest to some of these because I've had people come into a meeting in my time during COVID that they weren't invited to and, in fact, weren't even part of the company that was holding the meeting. So, you know, there's... Um, a fairly large chance of things becoming a major problem if you, especially if you're doing something um, sexual on cam. Okay, I've got another article from Australia. I like I like articles when they come up from Australia, and you know, gives me a sense of home. Sex parties allowed, but dancing at weddings banned under Queensland's COVID restrictions. <laughs> what do you think about that as a headline? I think it was designed to grab people's attention and apply the negative negativity of their of their bias immediately. A hundred percent, because instead of saying swingers parties are uh, allowed but or sex parties are allowed but dancing at weddings banned i mean they could have just said hey how can we uplift the wedding industry and how can we help to make weddings covid safe right but instead that doesn't grab as many headlines as people can fuck but they can't dance right so this one says uh let me just go down the irony is that if i was invited to a wedding this weekend to attend with my wife and i wanted to dance with her there i wouldn't be allowed to but i can go and have sex with 10 people (laughs) yeah well i think the the biggest problem here is is actually around the fact that lawmakers, due to the red tape and the like, are unable to keep up with fast-moving events like like this. You know, like a pandemic. This is this is also something that's been uh, outlined in the use of drones, for example, in international in flying areas. You know, the the, the lawmakers around aviation weren't able to keep up with that as well so it's just fast moving things i mean another one is big tech companies you know how do you deal with that another one is how do you how do you how do you deal with the genetics your genetics being used in other in other things is it legal illegal can you trademark your genetics there's a mountain of things that the law can't keep up with and lawmakers are hamstrung to do that and this is another example of that they've probably set the laws up in a way that they believed covered everything that was unsafe and in in fact, actually, somebody dug and found that if you do this, it's not illegal. Unfortunately, laws are not just laws for the sake of being laws, and it's only when you get to court where where they have to be strictly enforced. There is a there is also a scenario where you can have a law enforced on you because of the the design of the law or the, the way that it was meant to be taken. So you know, it's it's something as in contracts, the same thing can happen. You know, it's the intent of the clause or the intent of the law. So just because it doesn't strictly stipulate that swinging is not legal doesn't necessarily mean Mean that that you can't... But it's the opposite, yeah, is that what you're saying? Yes. 
So you know, there's uh, there's implications on people as well for that. If you if you break a uh, you break the intent of the law, you can still be held liable to that. Yeah. Here's what I want to finish up on as well as we kind of wrap up swinging in the media is that most of this year, because I, I have a lot of alerts set up where certain keywords come through, and I get an email once a day telling me what's happening around the world with that particular keyword. So I, I get an email a day, and I get so that's why I see so many of these articles and. of them, I would say throughout the year, have been extraordinarily positive in nature. It's just that the last kind of month, month and a half, they've been really negative in nature. Because we're holding events while there's a fucking global pandemic. It's not really a surprise. So this this kind of comes into my wanting to wrap this up and close this up is that in your mind, what I've noticed is that sometimes, especially as the events are unfolding and as more and more news articles pick up the events happening, like they might report on, on day one and then by day two, there's all sorts of different news coming out and another side has maybe picked it up. What I have found is that the information is incorrect. So they'll misquote things like the location They'll misquote things like the population at the event. They'll misquote what's actually happening at the event, like whether or not a certain event uh, was taking place, whether or not that's like a you know like a, a bar takeover or, or whether it's a dance party or whatever. They'll they'll misrepresent in the news. So, do you think that because we've agreed that these definitely hinder the community in one way or another? Do you think that it hinders it more because? These news articles are oftentimes, uh, you know, elaborating on or putting false information in there or misquoting things as opposed to getting it directly from the source and finding out the true information as to like, here's what's actually happening. Does the internet hinder the truth is what you're asking. (laughs) Jeez, I don't know. I'm sure there's a few people who can answer that globally right now. I mean, of course it does. People read one website and assume it's real. So then do you think it's a responsibility of like us, we host events, do you think it's our responsibility as event hosts then to get on the front foot and talk to these news articles or do you think that that would just hinder it even more and you just got to kind of sometimes let it go? Like what what would be your position on this? I think my position's fairly obvious and that is that you have to be on the front foot and you have to think about the problems before they happen, deal with those as a prequel to the event rather than, you know, a sequel, which is typically how people seem to be dealing with this at the moment. So rather than actually having, you know, something as logical as a press release or an understanding of how the event will run in terms of the COVID safe or in terms of testing, in terms of all those sorts of things, unless you're willing to get on the front foot and get that information out there, guess what? You know, that somebody's going to find a way to make you look stupid. Yeah. If So say we were hosting an event right now, for example, and... They called us at, I don't know, say the the event kicked off at 9 a.m. By 10 a.m. we have news people calling us. Would you be taking their calls? Would you be trying to get the the facts and the truth out there? Or would you just be not and trying to like just not? Silence is by far the worst way to deal with any major issue. Yeah. I think I think that's so what what I've seen a lot of during these these articles being posted in this incorrect information out there, which again I know to be factually incorrect because I know what happened at some of these events. I think one of my most frustrating things that I've found is that I'm reading these going, that's just blatantly not true. You know, that's just a, an absolute and utter lie. Well, if the negative starts, the negative will continue. The the only way you deal with this is to prevent the negative from starting to start with. Yeah, I just don't see how that could be, how you could completely do that. I mean, you might try to be doing all the... Well, the complete way, the, the most logical way of doing it is to talk to the people who are who are posing the negativity. There's, there's social media outlets, there's a whole lot of different places where people will post their opinions. And if you've, if you've set up your search notices appropriately you'll get a notice of those and that gives you the chance to then speak to those people on a case by case on a personal level and see whether you can adjust their opinion and if opinions adjust then guess what the opinions change if you change opinions you may actually even change the uh, the the the, the the broader public opinion which then stops your particular event from being outed or worse all of the people who are attending the event being outed Mm -hmm. yeah that definitely is a a concern of mine is that 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 impact to the community i think is is definitely a hindering on the community is the potential for attendees to be outed because again at the end of the day even if you dislike somebody even if you think that they're doing the wrong thing by what you know your perceptions are i don't think that anybody deserves to be outed um, and then potentially impact their their career their children you know the livelihood of of everything i just i just don't agree with that i don't think it's appropriate and i would hope that 
people wouldn't actively out a community member. There's no way to change minds unless you're speaking to the minds. Yeah, so even though it might not, and even though it might not end up being a positive or work in your favour, at least you've tried. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's uh, that's really all I've got for uh, swinging in the in the media. Anything else you want to add? Uh, no, thank you. No, that's all. Mm-hmm. That's all, folks. That's all she wrote. All right. Okay. That has been uh, swinging in the media. Bit of a negative topic. I don't know. Not great, but I don't know. That's what we're that's what we're living in in 2020. So hopefully we'll see some better news articles coming out about the lifestyle um, as we head into 2021. Fingers crossed, anyway. If you're looking for more ways to interact with Swinging Down Under, you can catch us on Twitter at Swing Down Under. You can also catch us on Instagram, Swinging Down Under or head over to our website, swingingdownunder.com. We would absolutely love to hear from you, so if you would like to send us an email, jump online, do it at cnd at swingingdownunder.com. If you've got podcast topics, questions, you want to talk about your journey, you can also support the podcast through our website by clicking through on any of the affiliate links or alternatively to jumping over to patreon.com forward slash swingingdownunder and sponsoring the podcast. If you can't do any of those things but just want to make a feel-good day, leave us a five-star review. Cheers, everyone, and thank you again for supporting Swinging Down Under podcast.